what happened was the very buoyant methane streamed out at the top. We had a big flame. In fact, I can show you the, uh, the sequence. We had a big flame that pulsed, and then it kind of diminished a bit once there was more oxygen in there. Uh, it was less buoyant, so it was, had a more well-defined flame shape. <coughs> Uh, then we got more oxygen mixed in, and we started to get a blue flame, which shrunk down to um, just being a little dome that you, even the guys in the front row could hardly see. Actually, if you were watching it very carefully, it actually dips very slightly inside, and you, you end up with a concave flame just just right underneath the hole. And then, um, oops, you probably can't really see that here. This was just a bit I, I'm amazed I actually got this with my phone, and I filmed it the other day. Uh, there's a little uh, burst of flame coming out the hole and coming out the side there before it goes pop, uh, and you get the big, the big release. The, all the heat from the premix flame release more or less at once. Uh, heats up to eight times the pressure. The lid pops off, and you get a, a very big but very brief uh, flame. So. Um, a few more things before we finish today, although I probably won't go the whole way uh, until 11 o'clock. Um, we've talked about heat of combustion. Heats of combustion for various chemicals. Um, so I've got methane, propane, uh, octane, benzene, uh, and alcohol, uh, or ethanol, alcohol there. Um, with the relative quantities that you require for stoichiometric burning, the amount of products you get, heats of combustion. Can anyone see a pattern there? Is the amount of energy release is related to the amount of related to the amount of oxygen in the reaction? Yes. Someone's told you that before, haven't they? Because <laughs> it's not it's not immediately apparent there's a pattern there unless you divide by oxygen. Um, and then you start to find that um, on the basis of the, the number, you know, divided by the number of moles of oxygen in each of these reactions, uh, you start to get a number somewhere about 400 kilojoules per mole of, per mole, per mole of oxygen consumed. Um, and with very little variation uh, across a range of different kinds of molecules. The first three are alkanes, uh, benzene, obviously an aromatic uh, material, alcohol, obviously an alcohol. You know, they're very... The flames from those things actually look quite different, but the, the numbers are all in the same ballpark. I mean, very fairly closely packed, um, at about 400 kilojoules per mole of oxygen. Uh, if we convert that to per gram, uh, it's about 13.1 kilojoules per gram of oxygen. Um, or, <coughs> yeah, about 13.1. So, I mean, everything we, everything we do in the lab when we're analysing things, and um, when we're working at the heat release rate of, if we burn a sofa and work at the heat release rate of the sofa, it's based on this calculation, uh, on the assumption uh, that the heat of combustion for oxygen uh, is 13.1. Not the heat of combustion of oxygen, that's a meaningless phrase, because that would, the heat of combustion of oxygen would be what happens if you burn oxygen in an oxygen atmosphere, uh, which is by definition zero. Um, so it's the heat of combustion for oxygen, just to be pedantic. Um, people always say all of oxygen, but you know, they're not always right. Um, so the heat of combustion for oxygen has a fixed number of about 13.1, but remember it's approximate. Depending on what the chemicals are, there are error bars, possibly 10-15% in that calculation. So if I ask you in a tutorial or an exam, again, to do a calculation involving the heat of combustion for oxygen, I don't want to see three decimal places of accuracy because the error bars don't allow you to do that. If it comes to... Are you, are you asking something or are you just waiting? No. Okay. no I'm just waiting. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if it comes to, you know, 2.013 something, it's two, okay? Um, also, in the literature, quite often, it's expressed as heat of combustion for air, bearing in mind that nitrogen is almost always there, so we might as well lump it in to the, the parameters we're, we're dealing with. So the heat of combustion for air is about three kilogram, kilojoules per gram of air. Again, assuming that there's the average 21% uh, air to 79% nitrogen, uh, we generally assume there's no carbon dioxide in water to, in air to begin with. Um, 
that underlies an awful lot of um, what goes on as fire safety engineering, particularly lab-based stuff. Um, it all comes down to this equation there. Um, so again, I'm assuming 21% of oxygen and fresh air. Um, if we have some experiment and I'm sampling the gases after the burning is taking place, we can find out the proportion of the oxygen and what's coming off. The difference between those two is obviously how much oxygen has been consumed. Um, if we can measure or estimate the volumetric flow rate, um, we know approximately the density of oxygen at, at room temperature is about one kilogram per cubic meter. Um, we know the heat of combustion for oxygen, um, and often these things are expressed, some things are expressed in different units from each other. So often you have to multiply by a thousand just to get the units right. Always be aware of that. Um, but if we've got some experiment and I can esti estimate or measure the amount of oxygen that's been consumed, we know the air flow rate, we can es estimate, uh, you t try to be, you can pick me up in this when I get it wrong, as I inevitably will, but I try to use the word estimate the heat release rate of that fire, not calculate or measure, but we can only estimate the heat release rate based on the amount of oxygen that's consumed. Um, so that's the, that's the second fundamental thing in, in this lecture. The, the balancing the equations was the first fundamental thing. This is the second fundamental thing. If you, if you get those two concepts and the three questions I asked you to remember at the start, uh, then that's the main thing you need to take away from this lecture. Um, so, just in closing... All we've talked about today has been burning in the gas phase. In reality, of course, a sofa doesn't burn in the gas phase. It's a sofa, it's solid. So we need to have some process to get from the solid sofa to get something in the gas phase. Because actually, unless we're talking about smouldering, that will come to uh, a long way down the line. Combustion is a gas phase uh, reaction. Fire is a gas phase phenomenon. Uh, in order to get burning, we need to get the solid product or the liquid product or whatever it is into the gas phase to burn. Um, so liquids, obviously, um, they evaporate or boil. Yeah, I'm sure you can picture uh, some liquid petrol bubbling away, producing gaseous petrol that then can burn, mix with the air and burn. Um, solids, some of them, like candle wax, uh, melts and then evaporates, um, or pyrolyze, and we'll come back to py pyrolysis uh, in more detail in a few weeks' time. Pyrolyze uh, just means to break apart under the influence of heat. Pyro means fire, lysis means break in, in Latin terms. Um, so if you expose something to enough radiant heat, or enough, it doesn't have to be radiant, if you expose something to enough heat from any heat source, um, the M molecules in that will begin to break down, to break up. So you, instead of having big, complex, solid molecules, they break up into little fragments that are gases. Those gases uh, can burn, can mix with oxygen and burn. Um, and so combustion is a gas phase reaction. We need to <coughs> somehow break apart our solid sofa into little bits that can burn. Um, and in order to do that, we need to talk about heat transfer. And heat transfer is the main thing that we're going to be talking about next week. Um, so I think that's probably a good place to break now. Um, so essentially that was basic chemistry. Next week's basic physics. If you've got access to Dougal Drysdale's book, have a read of chapter two uh, before next week. If you're really keen, uh, get some text like the Acropera and DeWitt book on, on heat transfer and have a look at that. Before you leave here today, I have a handout. Come and get one. Uh, this